Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> We actually met at a ski resort in southwest Pennsylvania, and we would be on a chairlift every once in a while together. That's where we began. We began by skiing together. And then at the end of the winter, it's like, all right, the is, big test. is this going to go further, or is this going to just stop here at the end of the, end of the ski season? Yeah. And yeah, that was kind of a big deal for me to say, all right, let's see if we can make this go. I remember on the day I got the official diagnosis, when we were told it was myofibrosis, I remember you immediately just lost it. I almost passed out. I've never passed out in my life, but I almost did that day. At first, I didn't think I was going to be able to handle it. I didn't want to have to deal with it. You know, I didn't, I didn't sign up for that. You know, it's, it's a life-altering diagnosis. If you look at all the symptoms, she's pretty much a textbook case. She's had everything that they say you're going to have as far as like night sweats and bone pain. There's times when I have really good energy. I try to take care of a lot, and it's a relationship, it's a marriage. We should be 50-50, but you do a lot more than 50%. You work all day, you come home. A lot of times you cook dinner, you clean, you walk the dogs at 10 o'clock at night before bed. Every once in a while I realize how stressed I am, and then it gets put away for a while, and then it pops its ugly head every once in a while. Yeah. I think it's a lot harder for you being like, you know, the quote-unquote caregiver. I mean, a lot of times I don't even think of myself as a caregiver. Um, you know, I'm just doing what needs to be done. I'm a scientific person, so I kind of read and look at statistics and the scariest thing for me is looking at those blood reports every three weeks. I get anxiety just to know, have these numbers changed? Are we trending in the wrong direction? I'm an electrical engineer. I work on some complex projects, and Amy's myelofibrosis is something I want to fix so bad, but I can't. When I feel frustrated and angry, I need to get outside and go do something. Exercise, go for a walk, take the dogs, just get out in nature. Being outside in nature is a reset button for me, especially if I'm doing intense activity. You get to a point where you're just thinking about your next breath or your next step or your next pedal stroke, and, and it's very therapeutic. I miss being on sports teams, playing team sports. When I was diagnosed, I was still playing flag football, and you were on my flag football team that one season. Yep. It's not like I was a stellar athlete, but it was always a fun way to keep in shape and be physical and get with a group of people. We have a group of friends, and they make us feel as normal as possible, but you do see things through their eyes every once in a while where, you know, somebody's jaw will drop when they see her walk up the stairs and, and literally, you know, scream in pain. Like, oh, I didn't realize it was that bad. My greatest fear for Amy is that her disease will progress and her life quality will, will diminish greatly is my biggest fear. I used to be more cynical and something bad happened. 
or something unknown was going on, I always assumed the worst. I think I handle adversity a little bit better now, and I'm a little bit more optimistic. You know, if we get a bad report, I'm not the first to say, oh my God, this is it. Where five years ago, I would have said that, oh my God, this is the end. And I think the funny thing about this disease too is you can go back and forth. We've had times where we thought I was starting that downward trend and then yeah. something changes and then I'm feeling good again for a while. So it's, it's, it's a definite roller coaster. I think if I hadn't met you and you weren't with me during my diagnosis and throughout this process, I would have been one of the statistics. I have the will to live and to have a long life with you, and so I, I try to do everything I can to fight this and to live longer and to keep having fun with you. And it's definitely a motivator for me to survive and fight and be a thriver. Skiing is the one thing I can do with you and feel like I'm normal, like we are our old selves again, because it's the one thing we can still really do together. We can ride the chairlift up and then just use the gravity to go down and we can ski together. Yep. My greatest hope for us is that the disease doesn't progress and we get time when we're both happy together. We take on this challenge together and we really have learned to be a team. <laughs>